Well, good morning, everybody. That'll wake you up, right? A little monk chanting. That's the way to start a Saturday here in Lawyers and Dragons. And for the record, chat, nobody was late today except for me, who was doing a few things in terms of back back end bookkeeping up until three minutes ago. So that's on me, not Rob or Alita. <laughs> but um, everybody, welcome to Lawyers and Dragons. We have a minor village burning right now and a missing mouse friend that I have been told a number of you are concerned about. So we're going to see if <laughs> hashtag free pip becomes a reality or just another fantasy. David, what do we got going on today? All right. Well, welcome back, everybody, to episode three already of Lawyers and Dragons, Echoes of Eternity. Let's do a minor recap of everything that happened last week. So we started off last week going through Lord Bashan's Manor, looking for the Silver Nightingale, which ended with a couple of combat encounters, a couple of mystical traps and situations of snark. And it all resolved with the team finding themselves back in eternity, back in Squirrel Town, as the entire town is under siege by monsters. And so we now know that the north side is being attacked and the south side of town is being attacked. And we find ourselves here on the south side which is burning. You guys have all been able to hear and you can basically see as there are monsters on the other side of town just running through the streets. Adventurers are running around themselves trying to put out all of the uh, uh, fires and the danger and take out all those monsters there. But we find ourselves here where Lima has run out into the street next to Hardy. And Hardy is clearly calling to somebody across the way down the street. This witch looking person, this witch woman, who is holding a blue stone, a blue stone in her hand. And as Lima runs past Hardy, Hardy says, no, don't get the pimp out of here. At which point the woman holds up the blue stone and Pip is pulled from her shoulders and pulled right into the stone. And just to give a little bit more of a visual, this is what that stone looks like. What a witch. Ooh. And so, oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you are the stone. <laughs> I am the stone. <laughs> the stone is you. <laughs> so we are picking up right here in that, and we're going to start off with Ghostblade and Gimlet, who are just standing just outside of Hardy's townhouse, uh, 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 town hall building there. You guys have just watched as Lima runs up, and you you will see as it is pulled off of her shoulder and pulled into this gemstone. And I'd like to know what are you guys doing, mind you. Uh, before you before you say that, take note that there is this guy who is currently walking around, just kind of lighting the buildings on fire. You see that there's this gargantuan sized monster that's just moving around, lighting the buildings up. Gentlemen, what do you do? I'm. I'm going to yell over to nobody and, and basically point out the giant monster and say, maybe he can be your friend too. You know, uh, <laughs> I was when I go, the same thing. <laughs> we're starting with sarcasm. Oh. Again today. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, so how, how far is the, is the really scary looking monster? The monster's probably like, 100 feet away it's it's off in the distance and it has its back to you all right now you do not know how far 100 feet is <laughs> well <laughs> that is, as far that as really hang close on, hang on because <laughs> battle map wise it's a it's distance okay <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> off in the distance let's go it's off in the distance, off in the distance. Well, you have to understand feet. robert thinking about this in terms of golf tees all right all right <laughs> but wait this is specifically like why 
in 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 this in the system we built, it squares now because the whole feet thing doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> it's off in the distance. Whatever that looks like in your mind. Okay, and the witch lady, how far is she? Up uh, about thirty feet away. Battle map sized. <laughs> Battle map sized. Uh, <laughs> Poor David. I can, he has to deal with can, us. Uh, can, can, Hardy, can Hardy hear me? Yes. Hardy, what's going on with the witch? Oh no, no, she's very she's she's not she's not a good person. As in, is there anything I can do to stop her? Well, so now she is basically if you look over in that direction, she's holding this gemstone, and there is this kind of green magical aura that's starting to swirl around her great of course there is <laughs> uh shoot her with an arrow okay roll her with ro ro before you do that yeah. everyone roll initiative <gasps> okay remember violence isn't always the solution to problems but it it's felt often like it the solution morning. to problems <laughs> i rolled a six i rolled a 13. 13. Uh, six. <laughs> six. 16. 16. And Ghost Blade. 19. So, folks, since this is the, only the second time we've done this this season, initiative is setting the order that we're going to take actions of, usually in a combat situation. So, when David says roll for initiative, that's usually a great sign that things are going to go a little poorly, but we'll see. Hey, now we're gonna kick some butts, right? Oh, the chat totally for the amazing. bad guys is what I meant, of course. We should weigh her against a duck to determine if she really is. A yep, witch. yep, we should. But this yeah, is what no, happens we... when one of your party members just says, Well, let's shoot her with an arrow, just out of the blue, <laughs> guys. If you want, we can weigh 51% of the carcass against a duck later. Can, can we also <laughs> can, we just, <laughs> can we also just be fair? I did ask Hardy first. You did. That was that was something I that, would not. That have was done. the needed interrogatory before you fired an arrow at a person we don't know anything about. She stole Pip. She did steal Pip. She did. Uh, All right, Ghostblade. It is your move, and you are uh, firing an arrow in her general direction. Twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> Twenty-four hit. Twenty-four hit. <laughs> in her general direction. And that does nine damage. Okay. Fire an arrow. It hits right in front of her, and you see that there is kind of this <clears throat> shield around her. And as it hits, it the, the, the arrow just sticks out of the shield, and it looks like shattered kind of glass now surrounds her in that spot. And she just looks over at you, and you could see that there's kind of a void there. There's something not right about this person. That Ugh. void behind the eyes. No, no, no. She's got she's got the magical defenses. You got to you got to get up close or something. <coughs> not Hardy telling us to get closer <laughs> to the danger. <laughs> well, Meanwhile, he so sits back <laughs> in the lawn chair to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hardy cracks open a cold one. He just sits back. <laughs> crosses his legs. Yeah, yeah. Crosses his... No, no. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, there's like a Tommy Bahama chair that he pulls out from his backpack. <laughs> oh. Hardy's got sunglasses on now. <laughs> well, uh, so after, in hearing Hardy, I can then take a cutting action and advance, right? And it is still in. your turn. All you've done is shot an arrow, so you can move. Or you and use your bonus actions. So yeah, we have a number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move towards her. Okay, how far can you go? Thirty feet. Okay, so you get up to Lima, and she's still another thirty feet away. See, this is the with the lawyering part. There was a conversation, and I asked how far the witch was, and the response that was received was she was thirty feet away. I meant Hardy was thirty feet away. Oh. oh, you mean this is this is why we have a map, a map. <laughs> See. Uh, 
<laughs> now you would have moved up to and actually we David, am I the unicorn? Up, you are the unicorn. Let's reset. This. Oh, they move. You can move, they do move. in real time. Yes. <gasps> yes. We need to we need to line up the map. <laughs> so at this point. Oh my point, god, that's amazing. So if I'm reading this right, David, I'm the shield. You are the shield. Let's zoom in and take a look at who, who everybody is. Because we don't have proper character art yet, but we have Gimlet is the hat. We've got the shield is nobody. We've got Hardy is himself. The teacup is Lima and <laughs> Ghost Blades the unicorn. <laughs> It's a pretty intimidating combat group. I, I <laughs> just. Oh, but it looks well, like Hardy's, Hardy's emoji theory, looks so. really, really good. Like Hardy's looking solid there. I mean, when you had, you know, Hardy, Hardy spares no expense. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have. That Fair usually art. precedes some really bad things happening. I, <laughs> and and some evidence that there were some expenses that were spared that were very important. I, well, let's just say Hardy was easy. Hardy may have had work done ahead of time prior to needing the battle maps done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where is the witch, wicked witch of the blue diamond? Right. So she's going to be right here. Okay. You have advanced. This is where you are. You're next to Lima. The two of you are standing next to each other, and you can see that she is off in the distance. I will put an indicator here for her. And so what else do you want to do? I can take a, I can take an additional dash in her direction. So that's the cutting action. I'll, I'll continue dashing. Okay. How far can you get with that? Uh oh shoot. Dash is a different number than the regular. I don't know, David. I think I can get well, that. Oh, the... dash would be I think that's uh <clears throat> you're uh, continuing your movement. Yeah, continuing the movement. So another 30 feet. Move up your speed. Yeah, so you move all the way up. And what do you do? You, so, and, and as you get close to her, you can kind of feel that under under your feet, there's this kind of like, the, there's this movement, and you feel like it's this kind of tingling magic underneath your feet. And you could see in front of her that yeah, there is this kind of barrier around her, surrounding just just her, and she just looks up at you, doesn't say anything, this kind of blank stare over her eyes, something really unsettling. What do you do? Uh, I can't really do too much except for scream back over my shoulder that I feel really uncomfortable. She's making me feel very unsettled by all of the green aura off emanating off of her. <laughs> like if someone has magic, they might want to use it during their role. So to be to, to, to be clear, you charged her. You ran 30 feet up to her and then yelled back over your shoulder. You feel unsafe as I'm running. <laughs> I need an adult. I need an adult. I need an adult. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting ready for the, the next hot opportunity plate is that hot. I have. I, I'm waiting for the next chance that I can use daggers and try to stab her, but I can't do that now. Mistakes were made. Try. <laughs> Nobody. It's your turn. And the last thing that you oh, would good. hear is... I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm thinking to myself that he might be possessed or something by this woman because it doesn't make any sense what he's doing. So, <laughs> Coming from nobody, that means quite a bit because nobody's always the one that's charging out first, <laughs> worrying everyone else. As the anthropomorphic shield, I'm going to try to come around this corner a little bit and get a better view. You come around the corner and you could see as there is now I'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Uh big scary monster attacking the buildings. You've got this witch here who's holding the stone, and you would have just seen his pips pulled from Lima's shoulders, hits the stone and just kind of disappears. Stone is all glowy, and yes, this is what you see. You see everything that we've just described. Mm. Hardy well, Hardy I yells out to you. He says, Nobody, you have to get her. You have to stop her, please, before she runs. 
All right. Well, I would definitely like more information about this whole situation. So I'm going to go collect Hardy and put him on my shoulder. Okay. Put him in the bag. <laughs> he doesn't go straight in the bag. That's for later. Uh, give me, give the me, bag. Uh, nobody roll a uh, perception check as you approach Hardy. Sure. How's an eight do? <laughs> on an eight, you see that sitting in front of Hardy, who is not actually sitting in a lawn chair, sipping mimosas, like that's not really happening. He's very frantic. But you see sitting in front of Hardy is a very small pile of green dust. And you Hardy, see nothing can you, else there. Can you explain to us what is happening? Who is that lady? Why is there eternity magic everywhere? What is the shield? Where did Pip go? What's the <laughs> giant fire monster? I got a lot of questions, Hardy. Can you help us you out? See, that's, it's the Jonathan Frake style conversation. <laughs> did you propound interrogatories and just send them to him in advance and then give him a couple of days while you're running over there? Well, I suppose if he objects to process, sure. But I'm just asking for some help right now. Nobody, this is a lot of questions. <laughs> We're kind of under fire right now. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> The okay, town well, is on fire. My best friend has been kidnapped. Let's start with who is that lady and where did Pip go? Okay, that is Lady Sylvania. Uh, she does not like me. Um, she's voice of, of eternity. Not very nice person. What does voice of eternity mean? It's her title. It's her, the title she has. She's like, you know, head honcho of, of eternity. And, um... Yeah, remember when I said I was exiled? I do. So anyway, so, so, so that's why she's she's here. I'm not supposed to you know, be here. And she found us. She found you because you built a town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not pretty good at the hide and seek, nobody. I'm not here to judge you. Just help me free my friends. How about that? <laughs> All He's right. like super saying, bad, bad at laying low. Out, maybe you don't build a town to yourself. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey, hey, it was named after me. We changed name, okay? I was trying to play the game. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe we can talk this out. Hardy, get on my shoulder. We'll go talk to Lady Sylvania. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's going to look around and make sure there's no bag. <laughs> well, I do have a satchel, but I'm not putting you in the bag. Just get on the shoulder, and we won't have to I, worry about the bag. Don't put me in the bag, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm going to jump up on your shoulder. Uh, give me another perception check. I'm concerned about these perception checks in Hardy. Now that lie. he's moved. 24. 24. Ooh. On a 24, you look down from where Hardy has now left and sitting next to that pile of green dust is his little bubble pipe, which is now broken. Aww. And sitting there, it's just sitting underneath this pile of green dust. So that's very much destroyed. And he jumps up on your shoulder. Okay. Okay. Let's d d carry on. All right, well, I would like to grab the broken There's a reason that pipe. detail came up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm going to grab the broken bubble pipe and put it in the bag. Uh, it's kind of destroyed. I don't think it's going to work again. Well, you never know, right, Hardy? We've gotten through worse than this. We've been ingested <laughs> by many a monster together. <laughs> Hardy, Hardy just disassociates, starting having the flashbacks. <laughs> Hello, Hardy goes freaking out. <laughs> All right, Hardy, let's let's go take care of this. Let's stride up towards Lady Sylvania and Lumber Loss. Did you say anything to Lima as you pass Lima? Uh, no. We're just gonna keep striding. Lima just like gives a nod. <laughs> you would get about here with your movement. Okay. Well, then I will position myself in between Sylvania and Lima. Okay. <laughs> you are positioned. Lima's, <laughs> Lima's not happy about being blocked right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hardy looks back. He's, oh, hello. 
<laughs> Hardy is the only one that has said anything to line but... <laughs> Um and and with that it is it is her turn and Ghostblade and nobody roll me um dexterity saving throws. Okay. I got an eight. Okay. Hey, uh, David is um is Lumberlass within ten feet of me? It doesn't look like it. Yes. So each square is five feet. Five feet. Okay. So at ten feet, Lumberlass, you get to add because I have an aura of protection. My charisma bonus. You get a plus four on your roll. Ooh. Oh, so that takes my deck save of fourteen <clears throat> and takes it to an eighteen. Okay. So here is what happens. And wait, and and nobody, what was your roll? Your eight. Eight. Okay. Whatever you're so, throwing at me, I'm gonna take it in the face. Yeah. So what's gonna happen is she's just going she's just That's going to gotta look. be the shirt. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. No, no, no. It can't be the shirt. It'll sound well to Rob's thirst crew. <laughs> Guys, I am very confused right now. <laughs> um, here's what happens. So she, on her turn, you're going to see as a ghost blade, she's going to basically look up at you, and there is just going to be this kind of burst of magical energy that just comes, flies off of her. It hits you, and it knocks you back five feet, but you are not knocked prone. Nobody, you are also hit by this kind of shock wave of magical energy. And you are knocked down. Oh no! And both of you are going to take uh, seven damage. Uh, <gasps> Ghostblade, you take half. Okay, because you saved. Well, what about the uncanny dodge part too? Because the attacker can see me. Oh. I have a reactive motion. Uh, yeah. Read it. Uh, when your attacker that you that you can see hits you with an attack you can use uncanny re your reaction to have the attacks damage against you oh so half of half of seven <laughs> one and three quarters it's yeah. so you take one damage <laughs> and with that you will all you will all watch as that green magical energy just surrounds her and she vanishes oh we did well with that team Wait, she vanished? Lemon didn't yes. even get her chance? Nope. She, she beat you at the roll. Damn it. And Gimlet, it is your turn. Uh, Gimlet will move up to... That's like a low wall, is it? Yeah, this is... It's like a... Um, you could see through this. It's okay. like, a, uh, uh, like a pen. Um... Gimlet it will probably then just move up to the edge of the building just so he's got cover. And right. he he's going to summon a shadow spawn. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> what? Why is this Gimlet has all the cool stuff because he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> so um Shadow Spawn of Despair, which How I can well, cast let's have 90 fun. Okay, yeah, where out. do you want to put it? Um, I want it as close to Mr. Big Scary Man as I can. Why is it a horse? Because I don't have the shadow spawn built in, so it's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a shadow spawn of despair that is a horse. It is it is Eeyore. It is Eeyore, it is despair. Eeyore is attacking the monster. It's a very sad, despairing horse. Do you have the uh, the picture to show people? I, uh, yes. I will pull it. But I like the idea of Eeyore, like, just bringing this, this monster's mood down. But we can't use Eeyore for certain IP reasons. <laughs> no, that's so... not true. You can. <laughs> You'll just get sued. <laughs> and this is... Oh. It, it's a Dementor. It looks Dementors! Like this. Oh, but on. it is actually on the battle map a horse. 
and we go back to that now. <laughs> <laughs> so it, um, <laughs> you know what? I guess for its starting action, it's going to move as close to it as it can and then do a dreadful scream. Uh, so, oh my gosh. That thing's got to make a saving throw. That thing is going to make a saving. What, uh, what am I rolling for? Uh, it is a wisdom save. I'm just trying to check. I Oh, it's my spell Nightmare. save, DC. Nice. Uh, so DC 15. 14? <laughs> <laughs> we, are catching, we are catching David off guard this morning. I love it. It is now frightened of the uh, of the spirit of despair. <laughs> it's still on the horse. It's still on the horse. As a question, oh is it a good idea to make that giant fire monster frightened? Is that an yes. improved position for us? I reckon it does. If it is frightened and leaves the village, then it's left the village. Yes, we all make better choices when we're frightened, definitely. <laughs> Fear response is usually going to go ideally. <laughs> I'm, I'm not looking for it to make good choices. I'm looking for it to make dead choices. <laughs> what is the deal with this horse? Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So that'll be Kiblet's turn, and the uh, and the spirit of despair's turn. And oh, I I'd like the spirit if it can to move around to the other side to be sort of behind it because it's got a five foot aura of messing with people oh, over here. Yeah, so it just continues to torment. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh no, we gave David toys. This is fun. I love it. It's just like prancing back and forth. <laughs> and um, the other thing the Spirit of Despair does is that anything that starts its turn next to the Spirit of Despair um, has its movement reduced by 20 feet. Yay! This just got really edgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, in the chat, Candy Mountain. Oh, I just thought about that. It's like, walking around like Candy Mountain. Candy Mountain. Candy Mountain. Candy Mountain. <laughs> Uh, Lima, it is it is your turn. Lima is pissed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so what is she going to do? She's well. First off, it's when when this terrible witch lady decides to disappear. She screams after Pip because she has no idea where he's going to go now. Um, but she's just pissed. Um, and so she, uh, well, she's mad about being blocked, but she's going to use that to her advantage because oh, these two guys just took can hit cross me. through them. I know, On, but I can yeah. also use magic through them. Um, <laughs> don't worry. Okay. It's good. It's good. Lightning magic. bolt. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's going to be. Oh gosh, which one is it? Uh, is it? Oh shoot! Maybe not fire. No, <laughs> no, it's going to be. Oh yeah, uh, uh, divine star. That's what she's going to use. Oh. <clears throat> so divine star, a star of divine energy streaks forward in a thirty foot long and five feet wide line from you in a direction you choose and returns to you at the end of your turn in a similar fashion. So we're boomeranging. Um, each allied creature in the star's path regains 1d6 hit points, and each enemy creature must make a dexterity saving throw, taking 1d6 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. At higher levels, you can cast a spell using a spell slot of third, a third or higher. The spell's healing and damage increases by 1, 1d6 for each slot level above second. And it just failed its saving throw. Yes. So you full damage. There we go. Hey, since I'm on the ground, do I get healed by this thing or no? Yeah, you get to ro roll two 1d6s. Well, I need David to let me know. Oh, Sorry. yeah, no, it definitely hits you. Two sixes. Oh, this is D8. Hang on. 
D6. I mean, it doesn't matter because anything above two puts me back to full. Okay. Heal. All right. <clears throat> David, I heal by 11. Yeah. So I think at that point you're you're full health, right? Nope. I'm still a couple back. Okay. I was bringing in an injury from the last match. Lima, oh. you, you've you got um, – you've done that. You still have mm-hmm. your movement if you want to Okay. Move. So then, <clears throat> then Lima is – She's so angry that she decides she's going to run from behind nobody over to behind that wood pile. And in the process, she's going to steal. She's going to steal one of his swords. (laughs) (laughs) I I only have a flail and a great sword. My my sword got stolen, apparently. (laughs) Um, Okay. Time. Uh, <laughs> which sword are you taking? A not the soul one? stealer. No, no, not the soul stealer. Don't do that one. Well, Lon Lumber or, or Lumberloss is not is not uh he's not in in range. She's right behind nobody, so she decides to take one of no, nobody's swords. Oh, so again, yeah, I get up front to try oh. to block for you, and you take my weapon from me while I'm on the ground. <laughs> okay, I just healed you. Lima, give me a sleight of hand check. Oh, Nobody no. getting disarmed is also kind of a thing that happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, sleight of hand. Where is that? This is this is always the fun. It's part. one of the skills in the middle. The big the big chart. Okay. Oh, sleight of hand. Okay. Sixteen. Well, <laughs> nobody, you could roll opposed if you, if you want to see that <laughs> with a with a perception check. I will try to perceive with a 21. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so, so you so Lima, yeah, you successfully uh <coughs> you successfully take the sword, but he knows you took it. Oh no. <laughs> Lima's like, whatever, maybe you'll get this back later. <laughs> Party's just like mommy and daddy are fighting. <laughs> you know, you take a couple of months hiatus and everybody comes back with bad attitudes. I don't understand. So, <laughs> you took my flail or you took the great sword from the last episode? It's probably going to be the great sword. I mean, it, it, it was. He just got that. Another sword. <laughs> he, just, he just got the weapon. <laughs> Everyone's taking his sword because the dagger ended up started with him and ended up with me, and now he's got a great sword that gets taken from him. And just imagine Lima's like nobody's holding holding down the fort, and Lima just runs by and grabs the sword off his back and keeps running. I mean, <laughs> like, to be fair, that, the great sword is a flaming sword, and it needs to be used against a flaming creature. Okay, that you know whatever you say you your logic <laughs> we'll approach that logic at a different time and lima <laughs> has the ability to to work with fire so <laughs> let's just go with it uh okay you okay you... lima i'm sorry i didn't acknowledge you <laughs> anyway okay. so then she like dashes away with this giant thing and then like leaps behind the wood pile to make her next move or to get ready Dramatic. for her next move <laughs> Love Give it. me an athletics check to hop over the fence. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Rude. Rude. <laughs> uh, I think is that with this is going to be where my roll fails. Oh, that is a disadvantage roll too. <laughs> Come on, hilarity value! Come on, hilarity value! <laughs> It's a twelve. She's gonna probably like trip, but then like catch herself. <laughs> it's not a it's not a smooth jump. You you you're running, but you you have to stop and do one leg over and the other leg over. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a fire monster that's terrified of a demon horse. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is going great. You know, I will say that that stumble is probably like very apt for like when you're really upset and trying to do something. You like get <laughs> snagged on a door handle, and like <laughs> you can imagine how she's feeling at this moment. It's in character. <laughs> Stub your toe. Uh, Lima, that's you well, Lima. That's it for your turn. Now, 
jumping over to our creature here. Uh, Gimlet, does it, can this thing be attacked? I know it's it, frightened. Oh, it absolutely can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it can it take is, damage. Yeah, it's a summoned creature. It's got, um, let me figure it out, um, uh, 14 AC and uh, 35 hit points. It's not a tough creature. It is, it's a summon distraction creature. Okay. But 35 hit points is no joke, okay? Oh, I mean, it's, it's no 35 joke. hit points we're not taking if it's beaten up on this thing. Okay. And it's going <laughs> to... <laughs> Get away from me! No! <laughs> With a... <laughs> <laughs> With a 23, uh, it's just going to, like, just unleash this barrage of, of smoke and flame out from, from under it, uh, which is definitely going to hit your uh, uh, despair. Let me roll for damage. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> On a oh, 17. <laughs> uh, the so creature takes 17 damage. Clothes. Okay, um, ouch to the creature, but at least that was not Gimlet taking 17 damage. So, <laughs> and you'll all see that there is now this uh, this ring of fire around it that the ground is completely scorched. Did nice. he fall into it? The ring of fire, and then he oh, went down, 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 yeah. down, down. His yeah. went higher. <laughs> so now we're at one, I think we're at three or four songs for the episode. We're good. <laughs> Paint that. Okay. okay, it is uh Ghostblade's turn. Now, Ghostblade, you have just seen all of this happen. You've just watched as there's this big, like, kind of inferno flies off of this creature, which is very tall. What do you do? This is, I, all I have is like weapons that shoot things. So I'm going to go position myself to that fence over on the left. Kind of get out of range of nobody so that attacks don't end up uh, further. I can go further than that. Further ahead? Like this one? Yeah, like that one. And try to shoot it with an arrow. Okay, roll the hit. Uh, do, do, do. Eighteen. You fire an arrow, and on an 18, you see your arrow just kind of <sighs> flies through the creature and just kind uh, of melts as it passes through. <clears throat> Ghostblade, as you do this, uh, give, me a, give me a perception check. Perception. That would be an 18. Ooh. Uh, Ghostblade, plus, on an 18, uh, you can... <clears throat> kind of see a red like kind of you coming from your belt where your sword is oh like magic pull that out off then the, off the blade and as you pull it out you could see that it's like very the gem inside of the the stone of your sword is glowing very brightly my sword might have been glowing i'll never know <laughs> <laughs> you can see it from a distance <laughs> all right lumberlass is whipping it out Oh, he... <laughs> Ian, thank you for being the one to, to say it. <laughs> Ian chose violence today. He just woke up and he was in a mood. Uh, okay. You've so you take the sword out and you do you do anything with it? Oh, you can't say that after Ian says that. You just you can't. <laughs> I'm going to continue advancing, but can I see that little ring of scorched earth? I'd like to stay outside of that ring of scorched earth. You can earth. absolutely see it, and you can pretty much tell that if you're standing in this, you're, you're going to take damage for two. If you're there, if you end your turn inside of it, you'll take damage. <clears throat> I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm going to. Assess, stay where I am, because I'm within, I think, a distance where I can get to him next roll. Give me an arc, uh, Arcana check. 
21. Ooh. On the a 21. You uh on, on a 21, you have the blade in your hand, which Shat has labeled the Soul Stealer 3000. Yes. Uh, there's a very uh, kind of pristine looking red gem there and there's magical energy coming off of it and as you look down at it uh, as you look back up you're still holding it but you no longer see this in front of you you no longer see the town around you you're standing in a completely different place stand by <laughs> I was going to say you can't leave me hanging there as you, you look up <laughs> you just kind of look down and see that there is like this kind of dirt path, this like kind of grayish dirt path ahead of you. And as you look up, all you see are these like constellations and stars in the dark, like kind of spacious. And as you look ahead, you see that this path leads down. At, whereas everything would have been intense, you're in the heat of combat, immediately everything goes still. There's no real breeze. There's no air. It's quiet. It's very quiet. And then there's this path going down, and you can see that there's kind of a shadow down ahead, and there's a log down this path, and you could see the back of someone sitting on this log, kind of <gasps> casting a shadow. Is it lumber loss? I am seeing think? myself. No, you, you see the, the back of the person. You can't see. You can't see the person's face. Do I have any movement options here? Can I? Or you do. Can I just talk. Yeah. What I, do you? What I, do you do? I'm gonna walk down the path and find out what the heck's going on. Like, okay. but kind of walk like sideways so I can start to get like the peripheral. Yeah, you're trying to see the face of the person. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's either I gonna see. be a wise old man or like some evil old man. It could be mm -hmm. Pep. We don't know. As you walk down, uh, you just see that this this is a, a human male young wearing armor and so about the age. they're sitting there and it looks like they're kind of sketching something in a book their head is down they're very not even not even really noticing that you're there do i, mean, I recognize him and can i see the sketch pad you can see the sketch pad and as you look and see their face you see that they look like this. Okay. Uh, I could all right. that. I won't. What do you do? I could. Can I get their attention? Ask them what they're doing. <clears throat> oh, oh, uh, I. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't see you there. Well, you're sitting here on a path on a stump. I was talking to or trying to fight a like a demon monster, but I'm here now, and I feel like you have something that you can share with me. What's going on? Why are you here, buddy? Uh, firstly, um, hi, and uh, secondly, I don't really know. Uh, I kind of been here for a long time. I don't really have a very strong memory so i don't know how much i could help you can i reach out and offer like a hand to see if he'll shake my hand yes let's do that and i'll just and introduce just you know ghost blade not creepy at all but see if he shakes the hand anukan nice to meet you anukan Got anywhere to go? Because we have a monster we're fighting. Would you like to come help us? You're fighting a monster? Mm-hmm. I don't know how this happened. I'm on a path. I was fighting a monster. Then this little glowy thing. Oh, is my sword still in my hand? No. Dang it. No, your sword's not Well, there. huh. Wait, you're fighting a monster. Yeah. Like right now. Which that got you here. sword's not in my hand, I'm wondering if this is just a vision. It seems really real, though. So... But you don't remember how you got here. No, but that's what I used to do. Like, that's... I was a monster hunter. A long time ago. So, in theory, uh, do you know what a monster... Like, there's a monster that's, like, all flames and looks like a big gargoyle. Uh, recognize that at all? 
Um, you got anything, any, anything else to describe it? Tormented by horses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it casts this, this ring of fire around it that scorches the earth. I shot an arrow at it, and the arrow just kind of dissolved and went straight through the monster. Is it made of smoke? Like, is the is its body kind of made of smoke? I'm going to say yes, because that seems really close to something I should remember, but I don't. <laughs> so, so that's... It's less Maybe of that's a, a detail that was given to me. <laughs> right into my poorest memory. It, it was. It was there. Tormented by horses is my new band name. That's... <laughs> really funny. <laughs> Dropping the hottest mixtape. <laughs> Tormented by horses. So he's going to look if he's, wait, if it's shot at it and it didn't do any real damage to it, if its body's made of smoke, then there's a good chance it's less of an actual monster and probably some kind of a summoning. Like it's a projection. Yeah, it's made of magic. Cool. Which means you need magic to defeat it. I don't have that. Do you have that? Can you come with me? I don't know how to leave here. I've been here for well, a long time. What about the little book in front of you? What's got what do you got in there? I just I'm trying to write down everything that I can remember uh, so that I don't forget again. And as you look down at the book, uh, you could see that it's basically just like kind of scribbles and a couple of sentences here, a couple of sentences there, and it's not evenly spaced. It, it's, it looks like things are written down frantically as if memory would have popped in his head and he's trying to make sure he doesn't lose it. So it's not organized at all. So he has a porous memory too. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying the ADHD murderer met an ADHD monster killer and are trying to communicate with each other? It's going swimmingly. <laughs> Did you used to have an amulet at some point in time? I know it's a random question. With like a gemstone, perhaps? I I never had an, an, any kind of amulet like that. Okay. Could I borrow the book? Just to take a glance through it. My my book? Yeah. I don't know what you're going to find in there, but sure. Neither do I, but let me just take a look, see if there's anything in there. Yeah, he hands you the book. Well, I'm going to flip through it, and I'm still going to try and encourage him to maybe take a stroll with me up the path, and I feel like there's something to learn here. So I think as I you, have an idea. You start flipping through the book, and you come across... Uh, just kind of doodles these these little markings and sketchings, and mostly it's just these like one couple of one liners that just make absolutely no sense and have nothing to do with the situation that you're in. But he's got sketches in here of monsters, and you'll find that it's some kind of a, a diary of sorts that has uh, monsters written in them, and then their weaknesses. And you see that as you're scrolling through. And give give me uh, an investigation check. Investigation. Oh, no. The one time, seven. All right. But on a seven, <clears throat> I can just ask that a picture that looks very similar to the monster you're currently engaged in but there's no notes on it. There's nothing else. Okay, can I flip it back in front of him and say this? This is what we're fighting. Oh. I don't... I don't even remember its name, but it's... If you have magical weapons, that's your best chance of beating it. Hey. Normal weapons won't... <laughs> Nobody's internationally, uh, internationally, interdimensionally offended. <laughs> so can I perceive whether this person is alive or whether this is like a version of a past self or? Yeah. Uh, give, give me a, 
Give me a medicine check. Six. On a six, you don't... The person looks real. You've shaken their hand. You're holding this book. It, everything about this experience feels real, and yet the place around you is n just feels unnatural. What do you do? I, I don't know where to end this. I kind of want this guy to keep like strolling with me to, like down the path, hoping that perhaps when this whole vision disappears, he's <laughs> end up we ends up with us. But hold his hand. <laughs> he's gonna he's going to reach out and and kind of reach to take his book back. He's gonna put a hand on your shoulder and say, magical weapons. And with that. You wake up and you find yourself back on the battlefield where you're holding Soul that stealers. sword. <laughs> you're holding that sword in your hand. And you're back into the heat of the chaos and you see that this big fire monster is in front of you. Being attacked by a horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Well, now I have a feeling that the, the sword is, in fact, the soul of this person. So, I'm, can I, I already advanced. I already moved. That, yeah, that would be the end of your turn. Gimlet, yeah. it is your turn. All right. Well, first things first, I've got a, uh, a creature that gets to attack. So, let's do <laughs> some of that. Um, so, it gets to attack once, I think, and that is a d20 plus my spell attack. I like this configuration fire. because it looks like the monster's face is the horse's face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, AC 25. I hope we'll hit. 25 definitely. Oh, actually, hold on. Definitely hits, yes. Excellent. And yes, it it's going to, it does cold damage. So, hopefully, that's good here. Um, I don't know. Lima's working theory is we hit fire demons with fire. So I've heard that. Um, <laughs> I've heard that theory. Um, I don't know that I agree with it. <laughs> now, Gim Gimlet, what exactly is the attack you're using? Uh, it is the uh, summon shadow. So the despair spirit is attacking it and ah, it's okay, going to okay. hit it for eight damage of cold damage with a chilling rend. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, it's cold. <laughs> uh, eight damage. Yes. And it's... Stop! <laughs> oh, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then the truly sad thing is that I don't actually have my soundboard because I will also... Uh, Gimlet will cast Catapult. Oh. And, I mean, I think we could all bark <laughs> for you. <laughs> so catapult um it's got to make a deck save um yeah. he'll just throw like a rock or it's a farming village i'm sure there's like a, a hand tool or something that he can eat at it and right between the eyes <laughs> it rolls an 11 all right that is not sufficient to, to avoid so it is going to take uh 16 points of bonk God, i love the bonk Bonk is great. And as, <laughs> you're throw, as you throw a tool at it, it just kind of <laughs> passes through the creature, uh, kind of unfazed. Saw that coming. <laughs> I figured it was likely, but I still had to try. And with that, are you moving? Uh, no, I'm staying in my spot with cover. Okay. Uh, which means it is... Uh, actually, no, it's nobody's turn. Okay. Well, I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to walk towards the ring of flame. It's getting a little hot in here. Maybe not go too close. We're going to be okay. It's getting Hardy. hot in here. <laughs> nope. Don't finish that. <laughs> Hardy, if you want to get in the bag, I can protect you better. I could just jump down. It's too hot for me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? 
I, I will continue walking towards the Ring of Flame. Okay. You have approached the Ring of Flame. I will walk inside. Oh, no. You have walked inside the Ring of Flame. I will <laughs> try to communicate with the fire monster. <laughs> and what are you saying? <laughs> fire monster, why are you doing this? <laughs> Because I'm a fire monster. <laughs> Short, simple, to the point. I mean, this is good advocacy. <laughs> Even a fire monster doesn't need to just destroy. Maybe you could join our party and help save the land instead of ending it. I have oh, a free intelligence I cannot be reasoned with. <laughs> Gimlet is uh, face bombing way back. <laughs> does, does that mean that he's it's like it's like fighting with a three year old? Basically, <laughs> <laughs> or I should say, reasoning with a three year old. He's like, I don't want to join the party. I want to burn things. <laughs> <laughs> Command. Command. R read through the command. Sure, I can read through command. I don't know if you can. Speak a one word command to a creature you can see within range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. Oh, what's the command? Stop this... burning. <laughs> yes. My command is extinguish. Oh. Uh, what's the saving throw? Wisdom. And I, and I can't believe it, but it just rolled a natural one. <laughs> and uh, I can't, I can't dispute a natural one. <laughs> the one has, the one has spoken. The one has spoken. Sometimes the nat ones go against the DM. The the, the creature throws its hands up and ah, smoke just fills the air, and the creature disappears. disappears entirely i tried to talk to him first you now see that there is a spooky ghost horse in front of you <laughs> <laughs> asking you if you want to go to candy mountain <laughs> uh is that it for your turn um we are still yes. in combat yes except i will smile at hardy and indicate that this is no problem at all. Oh, now it's a problem. I, I don't think that that is it. It, it. it went too easily. They don't all have to be hard. Oh, you just said that. No. To, to our chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it is, it is Lima's turn. Lima's just standing there with the sword, still full of anger, needing to release it against something when this you giant have, monster disappears. You have a big pile of wood in front of you. You can chop some firewood. <laughs> uh, are there any other indications of danger? David? Yes. So okay. there's still this big fire uh, pit happening here that has not mm -hmm. extinguished, though the creature has disappeared. There is a ton of smoke in the air that is starting to cloud your vision. <sighs> Okay, so Lima, she wants violence is what she really wants, but what she's going to have to do is put out that fire. Okay, um, so how, she, she's going to she's going to cast create water over it. How how much can you? Uh, okay, so for create water, uh, water? you create. So at higher levels, okay, so create water is you, you create up to 10 gallons of clean water within range in an open container. Alternatively, the waterfalls is rain in a 30-foot cube within range, extinguishing exposed flames in the area. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot second level or higher, you create or destroy 10 additional gallons of water or the size of the cube increases by five feet for each slot okay. level above first. 
Okay, so, so you, yeah, higher, you higher level. the water, and yeah. um, where are you going to drop it? Right over the right uh, over the center of it. Yeah. So you drop this bucket of water. This, mm-hmm. this splash of water comes down. Nobody you get it, hit with this water. I make it rain. <laughs> So first she takes his sword, then she hoses him down with the... <laughs> That's going to be a wet cat. Hardy's in the bag, isn't he? You know, I don't think he got in the bag. It is smoky, and now I am very wet. I don't like this at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lima, on your turn, you are going to cast... Or the rain uh, is going to descend upon this spot. And at which point, uh, the fire seems like it's going out, but it's not totally gone yet. Oh, no. Are you are you going to move? Uh, yeah, she's also going to, like, run towards the ring of fire and start, like, stomping on it to, like, put it out. Uh, I need another athletic check to hop the fence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like it's not going to go well. Come on, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a 16. <laughs> Uh, yeah, on a sixteen, you she's, you she's, very she's casually. She's a little less frazzled at this point by her anger. Very good. You you jump the fence and you start stomping on the fire to try to put it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, as your turn ends, you both will look down and see that there is a little trail of fire that continues that actually leaves the pit and starts moving outwards, and from there, you see the ah! creature. <laughs> Reemerge, oh, no. popping back up. However, it is significantly smaller than it was before. Uh, it is Ghostblade's turn. What do you do? Uh, Soul Stealer 3000. Is that amulet still? Is that gemstone still glowing pretty red? Yes. We're going to look down at that. We're going to kind of remember that little conversation and is that fire creature in distance of me just attacking it with the with the sword? A hundred percent. Full attack with the sword. Hey, you know, I can't read your mind or anything, Hignar, but do you want to communicate with the rest of us any information about this battle? Uh, guy said, yeah, I do want to shout out that it's a monster. It's a magical summoning uh, it can only be destroyed with magical weapons. Don't ask me how I know. We'll explain later. I look forward to it. For the note, it can also be destroyed by talking to it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that worked really well last time. <laughs> it's just now torching a different part of the village. It seems significantly smaller. Uh, and Ghostblade, that roll is a 2d8 damage roll. So you roll a hit like a normal weapon, and then it's 2d8 damage. Okay, well, roll to hit, because the my usual roll to hits have different hit points. Oh, just, so just just roll a regular dagger to okay. hit, and then separately roll 2d8. Okay, so the dagger's a 21. That's a hit. And then the 2d8. Is a seven. That sucks. On a seven, Ghostblade, you run over, you have your sword in hand. You lift it and slash at this creature, and you feel like you've now collided with something. Whereas before it was just passing through smoke, but you just feel like you're carving through this thing. And as your sword leaves, you could see that there is this kind of gaping slash through the creature. Where there's this now Lava's red. Red, well, more of like this red magical energy is now like flying off of the creature very slowly and lifting up over it. And it's just looks like it's starting to groan at you. And that is it for your turn. And uh, Gimli, wait. oh, what do you, what else you got? Cunning action. Cunning Disengage. Action. Get outside of that, that little perimeter of this guy, but still within my next attack. Okay. You have moved. Uh, that is it, Gimlet. It is your turn. That uh, let, is lethal. Let's move uh, the scary horse. <laughs> it's got a movement of forty feet. 
Does this have any negative implications for the people it passes through, like me and Hardy and Lumberlock? No, only if you start your turn next to it. Okay. What in the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so, uh, how far away is the scary horse from that thing? <laughs> It'll be within five feet now. It, it would make it. All right. Um, can it make it an attack or just make it? Oh, it can make it an attack. That was just movement, right? Excellent. Let us roll an attack. Uh, AC 22. That's it. All right. And eight points of cold damage as the thing comes up and starts attacking with the... it takes a swipe out of this thing, hopefully. And with that, you'll see as, as this thing comes up and starts using cold magic on it that the creature itself just kind of freezes in place and the fires of it start to extinguish, leaving behind some kind of a statue frozen in place. But it's still alive and it's trying to break out. It's just kind of frozen. All right, and then for Gimlet's action, he's going to use a minor illusion to make a uh, an image of a large middle finger pointing at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on point character-wise. <laughs> it, it's an important action. There is now, all of you can see, that this square here is a giant floating middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my turn okay nobody it is your turn okay well um we are going to walk backwards now towards where all the action is now past you run the other way and anchor. yes you you run past the floating middle finger <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Okay, it still looks kind of dangerous. <laughs> well, we're going to try to talk to it again, Hardy. Nobody Why did you come back, that. friend? It's, it's a statue. statue. Solid. <laughs> it's a statue. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody walks over and tries talking to it. It's and it, it just... Have you... All, <laughs> <laughs> have you, you considered the, the merits of murder? <laughs> The eyes are now looking at you like <laughs> Honestly, I'm more scared of the dementor with a horse body. All you hear from the statue is just like this like <laughs> muted groan. <laughs> is it talking to you in your mind? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hardy, jump on its shoulder. No, it is hot. I don't want to do it in front of my paws. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I will shove the statue over. <laughs> okay. Roll a strength check. I will roll a strength check. <laughs> Eight. On an eight, you go to move it, and you're, it is too heavy for you to move on your own, although there is a little bit of give, but you can see that on the bottom of it, it is still very much uh, uh, fiery, so it's not really pushable yet. It's not fully formed into a statue. Hardy, help me push it from the top. I don't want to burn my paws. <laughs> it's a, ha a cat on a hot... <laughs> on a hot stone roof. <laughs> oh, no. Didn't know the heat. This is terrible for my hair. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you do on your turn? Because I think you still have an action. Um, well, I guess I would try to give another shove. We felt that give. We can shove okay. it down. That's we can do this. Does. How about instead of an eight, 
a four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like the four will succeed where the eight failed. <laughs> it just like sinks lower into the grass. <laughs> no, no. Then one question. Is it talking to you in your mind? Okay. You sit <laughs> talk to it. And then you're just like shovey, shovey. It's clearly not moving. Hey, Gimlet, come over here and help him move this. It's like lifting a couch, you know? One person, bad time. Two people, easy. I asked for your help, Marty. Look at how small I am. <laughs> Gimlet sort of looks. Because <laughs> Gimlet's also real short. <laughs> When you try no, to move your couch, you ask your cat to lift the other side? <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to figure out what you're useful at. <laughs> Apparently not that either. Oh, no. I, <laughs> the snarkiness of this, you know. Oh, For the love of God. Okay, Lima, it's your turn. <laughs> um... Okay, well, Lima uh, is still angry, and so she's going to angrily run directly up to the stone monster, <clears throat> and she's going to through she's gonna, the middle finger. Yes, just okay. just right through that middle finger, <laughs> and then she's going to take the sword and just slice him right through the middle. Okay, roll to hit. It's much more humane than my shoving. Roll to hit with your basic weapon okay. that you have that you normally roll with. I think that's just a regular D12, right? I uh, it would be plus six. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, it's a plus four. Roll roll with the mace. Ah, oh, got it, got it. Okay. <laughs> it's a nine. <laughs> On a nine, you're going to <laughs> you're going to be too distracted with nobody's hands on it. But as you bring the sword down, you kind of miss because there are people in the way. Sure, blame me. <laughs> uh, on the creature's turn, the creature is going to go. It's going to try and break out of its stone prison. Oh, my. It rolled a one. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of like shakes a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like stays. No, its eyes just get really big like it's straining. And then it just. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 Tough rolls. It just it it just accepts it just uh, it, it accepts what's coming next. Ghostblade, it's your turn. Uh, we're gonna smite it or shame it before we hit it again. So I'm gonna summon Nightwind, cast it over towards the uh, magical floating horse, just so that glitter shoes everywhere on the 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 monster. You want to glitter the spirit of despair. No, no. I'm casting it so that when night wind goes, like the wind will blow it onto the statue. <laughs> you want to glitter the fire statue. Gotcha. I need yes. I need a nature check. Oh no, please don't be bad. Nature check. Come on. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? You're just oh, now 20 plus way? two. Oh, okay. See, if you were old anything lower than that, you wouldn't have known where the breeze is coming and everyone would have been covered in glitter. That's a nat 20 plus two. You yeah, have to respect that the is nat 20. On point. Uh, Ghostblade respect the nat 20. Down, throws down Nightwind and a just wave of glitter just covers over the statue with glitter in its eyes. And it's like trying to blink but can't. All of a sudden, you hear Lady Gaga coming from the statue, like, I'm on the edge of glory. <laughs> we don't need to. It's just, like, inside the statue. Monster. And then we're going to attack it with the Soul Stealer 3000. Okay, roll the hit. Nat 20 plus 6. I am not Ooh. joking either. David can see these. <laughs> Ghostblade, you run up. And with Please describe how you dismantle this creature. We're just going to do just the, the from the lower end, swinging up like a golf swing, just towards its head, and we're just going to try and smash the thing to oblivion. You, you raise your sword up. You bring it down on top of it. Boom. And then you swing up one more time and just cut through it, and the creature just psh, bursts into a shower of both little pebbles and glitter. 
falling down into place. This Murder is, where we'll is find sometimes out the right kept. thing. <laughs> oh, and, that just, and as that, that happens, there. you'll look around. All of you will look around and you'll see that there is a series of monsters running around that are now starting to make their way into your district, which is the south side. And you see that flying overhead, there seems to be some kind of a, oh my gosh, that looks like a nilbog from back in the courtroom riding on a broomstick. (laughs) (laughs) And you're going to (laughs) see... Hocus pocus, you have no focus, and it's gonna wave a little <laughs> wand, and a little spell is gonna fly out and hit Gimlet. And Gimlet, <gasps> Gimlet looks like this. No, <laughs> <laughs> Gimlet was turned into a pumpkin. Gimlet goes, Nah, pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh hey! All right, <laughs> and with that, I gotta uh, I gotta step out. Thanks everybody, and uh, see you next week. <laughs> I'll be yeah, a replay group. Maybe, for the rest. maybe we'll see you next week, depending on how this goes. <laughs> yeah, don't let anybody eat me. That's okay. Nope. No you pies. Come, yeah, you might come back as a pie, but you know, it's we'll figure it out. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, see you guys. <laughs> hey, we should probably take him with us if we have to go anywhere. Yeah. How big's that satchel, nobody? Does the pumpkin talk? <laughs> Normally they do talk, but um this one's not. <laughs> this one's kind of quiet. <laughs> well, let's grab the pumpkin and put it in the bag. Is the middle finger now disappeared too? The middle finger is now a pumpkin middle finger. <laughs> The is horse is a pumpkin horse. Of many little pumpkins, or there is just one pumpkin, <laughs> and uh, effectively, combat has ended. And as combat ends, uh, you could see that yeah, there are these kind of monsters rummaging around down on the other side. But you're also seeing that there is a bunch of other people that are that are or on I'm sorry, the north side, and there are people over there that are dealing with it. They're they're fighting the monsters, putting out the fires. It seems like it's secure there. And as things just kind of begin to come to, to a settle, what do you all do? Lima, Lima want, her first instinct is to still go and charge after those other monsters because she still has anger that she wants to let loose. This is a lot of anger. Do we need to have a conversation? Is there medication for, for this? Therapy. <laughs> Guys, she drinks a lot of tea, okay? She does drink a lot of tea. She normally manages things pretty well, but when Do you have people, one of like the soothing when steal, teas? When people steal her 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 new little innocent friend who's very harmless and helpless, she gets very angry. Lima, Lima, wait. Wait, there be it is okay. Settle down. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Nobody put me down. I have to calm down, Lima. Okay, I will put you down on the ground, Hardy. Okay, and he's just going to, like, walk over and just little pause on Lima's booth. No, settle down. It is okay. We need to <laughs> work he, together. If he starts, like, if he starts like, 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 uh, like kneading dough on her foot, then she's going to look down and be like, oh. It's going to start like that, and then he's going to see the your shoelaces and, and completely forget what he was saying <laughs> and start pulling on your shoelaces. <laughs> and start Calm. tying them together. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what is this thing? Too lace. <laughs> anyway, anyway, calm down, calm down. I sorry. Okay, I got distracted. <laughs> uh, as everything kind of comes to a point here, uh, the buildings are the the, the the simmering on the buildings is starting to go down. Now it's just a lot of smoke in the area, and Hardy's going to look at you and and all say. Okay, I think I think we need to we need to regroup and then we we have to we have to go after Pip. We have to go get Pip back. Okay, there's still time enough to save him. We we could go we could go fight that but fight the evil lady. But I um I can't do it on my own. I definitely How do we uh, um, get to the evil lady? Are we yeah, all concerned Hardy, that our friend is turning into a pumpkin? Know. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? We should we should probably get inside. The smoke is starting to affect my eyes. 
and I don't really like it. So let's let's let, let's go in, let's go in. Are there Lima, books Lima's inside? Gonna, Lima's gonna scoop him up and put her put him on her shoulder. I, I appreciate that very walking. much. Can we still see the monster that cast a spell on Gimlet? It that this this it just flies off. It was a flyby. <laughs> it was a very much a flyby. <laughs> It was a hit and run. <laughs> All right. Well, I will drag my magic pumpkin and I will follow Lima inside. As you guys all go inside, there is um, Hardy's building here is kind of overturned. It's, uh, it doesn't look very good. Uh, and But the truth is, you don't know if it was maybe Egan rummaging through everything uh, while you guys were... <laughs> Busy. Where, or, where is where is Egan? Egan's gone. He didn't want to fight. Egan is, uh, disappeared. So he says, I see. "A fair weather friend." Mm-hmm. You just can't. Uh, friend eagles. is loose. A loose definition there. <laughs> friend is never a loose definition. Oh my <laughs> gosh! That's <laughs> right. We have to save. We have to save number one best friend. And I Marty's agree. Gonna like, best friend sound it like kind of looked down and he just looks really defeated and kind of beat up so hardy can you tell us about the witch that took him like compose yeah. yourself because we have to go after her but we need to know a little bit more about what we're going after i am doing best i can under circumstances okay very upset i don't get upset very often but she took number one best friend lima do you have catnip tea I was just gonna say I happen to have some, so she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna brew a little bit of catnip tea, and then and then just put it in the tiny little teacup that is hearty sized and put it on the table right in front of him. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna plop down and just start sipping it. <laughs> he's gonna start, <laughs> sipping the tea. He's gonna start nudging it, <laughs> rubbing on it. <laughs> It smells, it smells like kind of good. Um, okay, I drink tea. He's going to start drinking the tea. And then he's going to look up and he's going to say, okay, I think it's time. I probably should tell you all what is um, what is the deal or, you know, what is what is going on. Yeah. Why did you, you, you had that blue stone in your study. What happened? Well, she kind of came in and started knocking everything over and she was looking for something. I didn't realize that was what she was looking for. Well, why don't we start with how you got it in the first place? What? Ha how, how did you get it? Oh, Pip? I've always had Pip. No, I mean the stone, the blue stone. Oh, yeah, Pip. Or is that the same thing? Okay, okay. so let, let me really back up. So Pip is, uh, how do I say? Um, have you heard of a Deor? No. Give me a history check. Everybody or just Lima? Oh, everybody. Because everybody's here to hear this. 15. Yay. Oh, seven. <coughs> hey, but the no, nat yeah, 20s yeah. came during battle. So natural 20. Okay. Natural yeah. 20. So nobody. You have heard of Deors, but you've never seen them. And for the most part, you kind of thought that they were legend, like this kind of legendary thing. Um, okay, so so Pip is uh, what we call kind of like a Deor, okay? That is uh, friends who are in two places at once, but um, asleep in one place and dreaming in another. Huh. So the kind of, um, the stone is uh, like a home for Pip while he's dreaming. Uh, it also lets him run around in the dream and it makes sure that he's asleep and safe in the other place that he is. is so he's actually the day or? The... What, what, no, it is like a like a like a connection to the place where he's sleeping. And so that is where it allows him to run around here. Is he sleeping in the stone or is the stone just a mechanism to put, keep him asleep? It's a, it's a mechanism to keep him asleep, yes, because he is safer asleep. Do we know so, where he is? We, He's in a place where no one can get to him. Uh, Hardy, can I ask a question? Because the Soul Stealer 3000, can I hold the gemstone up and say the red stone on the, on the sword? 
you know, with the can budget. I just do a, ble- a brief summary? Too much to explain. Let's sum up. Yeah. Redstone, I disappeared, went to a path, <laughs> saw a person sitting on a, on a thing. Does that sound at all similar to a day or? I mean, a little bit, but but like Nightwind. Nightwind is a is a day or. Okay. You know, friends who are or who can appear here, but are also there. So it's very very similar. So to so Pip, Nightwind, they're both day ors. What you're talking about, probably hallucinogenics. Whatever you're doing, you should probably. Stop. <laughs> Maybe stop sniffing trees. Yes, <laughs> the, the green <laughs> dust. Stop you know, sniffing the green dust. It sounds like out of body experience. You know, Got something, you know, I, I don't know, Lima, maybe give you mushroom tea. <laughs> sounds a little crazy. Only for ceremonies, okay? Very special <laughs> ceremonies, very special occasions. It sounds even more concerning, to be fair. <laughs> yes, okay, good. Good summary, thank you. Now I understand day ors. So Pip is a day or, and Lady basically takes him because uh, it is a very strong font of magic. But it's not, um, it's not really from eternity. Hardy, you know, you know my medallion, my amulet. Yes. Pip said that he recognized it. He had seen, he had seen one just like it. Do you know anything about that? I, I don't, I don't really, but I've seen other amulets. I've definitely seen other ones. I mean, but, but do um, they look like mine? Well, no. See, see, that's the thing. Yours seems is kind of special, um, yeah, but all of them are special. They're 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 individual. So okay. each amulet person holder, we, person thingy, uh, they have uh, their own one. Hmm. Okay. Uh, back to the lady. How do we get? You were giving us some details about her. Where does she? Where can oh. we find her? You said not eternity, but somewhere else. You want to go after your number one best friend. You have to help That's us. Right. That's right. Find. Yeah, we we if if I would I would like to to request that you guys help me go and and fight her and 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 to get back number one best friend because <clears throat> I cannot do it on my own. How? But, but wait, you you said the the stone isn't from eternity. I thought all magic was from eternity. I mean, that is kind of uh, how you say fake news. <laughs> Eternity is place of never-ending magic, but there is magic in everybody, in everyone, everywhere. There's all types of magic. So, but this is, you know, eternal magic is here, and and then there's blue stone magic from somewhere else. Well, I don't know, you know if the color has anything to do with it, but it has to do with, you know, the place. Did, did you not go over this? I think I thought I got the sworn I said it to somebody, but there is, of course, the world you guys are from. That is reality. And then there is where we are now, which is eternity. But then there is the space in between. What's that one called? Animosity? Oh. Infinity, but okay. <laughs> it, sounded, it felt a little Wait a pointy. Minute. Wait a minute. Are you saying that that Pip is an infinity stone? Whoever came up with this needs to get fired. Because <laughs> clearly, I'm like, it was like whoever came up with naming these things a serious problem. <laughs> not, not catch that. Who, who could have done that? Son of a. It's that is not yikes. Okay, anyway, let's just get back on course. That could also mean that Rob already has another infinity stone, a red one. It's not, it's not. We're looking for a green one and a yellow one. Hardy's been very clear on this. I don't know what an infinity stone is. I hate that this dangerous nonsense. <laughs> Big yikes. <laughs> no. <laughs> for for copyright reasons, we're calling them for, infinity rocks. <laughs> for in, for copyright reasons, they have nothing to do with the gauntlets and and, and, and 
killing 50% of the population, okay? I don't have to do it now. <laughs> okay. No, these are stones that connect one place to another, basically. And they're called Dayar stones, not Infinity okay. stones. Okay, Dayar stones. Got it. <laughs> okay. So, so basically, we would need to um, we would need to go after her and go to her, you know, kind of castle, maybe fight her and and all of the uh, possibly all of the Infinity Lords along the way. There are, wait, Infinity Lords? I'm sorry. No, I said that wrong. It is uh, the Eternity Lords. Yes, Eternity Lords that live in Infinity. That, no, 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 no. She is. The, she is not. She's. She is here. Everybody is here. Okay. But but she is the voice of eternity. That is her title. Okay. She's, so she's the voice. But there's other lords. Do they? What are yes. the other lords' titles? Uh, I just call them. You know, that's Guy. That is Steve. <laughs> that is Agnes. <laughs> I don't really know their names. I don't. I don't want to know their Judy. names. Judy. This is. Uh, yeah, there is Judy. Yeah, there. There is a Judy. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Very nice, very nice person, Judy. Oh, we were concerned that the Lords of Eternity would be upset or violent. But if they're very nice people, then we should just walk up and go get Pip back. Well, you know, <laughs> I would like to hope that some of them are, are, are nice, but, um, you know, they're not going to be happy with me because I kind of, uh, um, how you say, Committed tax fraud, and that's why I was still banished. Still your taxes? We remember. Well, it has less to do with the taxes themselves and more of what you're being taxed. And um, so I did not exactly, uh, I was not exactly forthcoming with mine, which led to me being exiled. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, that was not too fun. But uh, that is when they got me. It was it was it was the lady who basically threw me in jail for some time. And the only time I got out of jail was when I met you bunch of bozos. Well, but then you, created, you created a brand new enterprise and taxable income, didn't disclose it additionally. And <laughs> I mean, you doubled down, we're bringing, bud. We're, we're bringing the lawyers back in to lawyers. You doubled down. To... Wait a second, Ghostblade. Have I taught, have, have I spoken to you about a whole new investment opportunity? Oh God. <laughs> have... <laughs> It's, it's called Hardy Coin. <laughs> it is Hardy no. Credit, no. not he's, Coin. He's, he's starting. He's starting his own exchange. <laughs> the what do you mean starting? We started it already. It is in full operation. HTX. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostblade, I have you have day one entry right now. We get in on the ground level. <laughs> Hardy, is that your real name or is it something Hardy Freed? <laughs> <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. Nobody, take out take out the gimlet pumpkin, dip him in ink, and then and then stamp him right here on, on this contract. He can invest right now too. He's got that bag of gold somewhere. <laughs> Hardy, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you this, but we're not gonna dip gimlet in ink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> HTX. Oh God! Hardy bank cat freed. He's one of the Infinity Lords, Gary Gensler, or someone that looks like him. They are Eternity Lords. Eternity Lords. Yeah, they are, they are Eternity Lords. Get the name right, okay? Okay. So, how do we start finding them, talking to them, or you know, trying? Can they be reasoned with or well, killed? I mean, actually, we, we killed. Make- we may come across some of them. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but my um, my my magical pipe got kind of destroyed. She it she shot did. at me, and it uh, it kind of broke. And um, so I, we can't really use that to jump to different places. So we're going to have to walk. Well, maybe we, we can fix it, Hardy. Probably not. Probably not. Well, we don't know we, if we don't try. I, we could we could try. You could go ahead and try now. I mean, do, do, see what happens. Let's take out the broken pieces of the bubble pipe and work with Hardy to try to fix it. Uh, I think this is not probably going to do it. We're, it's probably just going to go to dust. Um. Okay. So, firstly, I'd like to point out I don't have thumbs to hold things in places, <laughs> but I could be a really good. 
<laughs> I could be a really good backseat commander. You know, I would tell you what sure. to do. Oh, so, yeah. it's like, have you seen a uh, big time filled ratatouille? Oh, no. Please tell me that Hardy's getting on someone's head and manipulating via hair. <laughs> Let's see. I, I, I'm a little too big to sit on, on like, on your, to pull your hair. So I'm just going to, like, use my claws and put them on your head and move you back and forth. Does that work? Why don't you just sit in front of the bubble pipe and tell me what you think we need to do to fix it? Okay. Uh, and go ahead and roll Arcana check. Arcana check. Sure. 12. On a 12, you do not know what exactly this is totally made of. It is, it is in two separate parts, and there is you, you didn't get all the dust that was outside, but you've got these two pieces here that are broken, and you wouldn't know how to put them back together. Hardy, do you have any masking tape or other adhesive? Do I have adhesive? Um, Super glue. I don't know if kind of glue is going to do the trick. Like, uh, wait a second, uh, Ghost Blade. You've got you've got Nightwind, right? I do. Okay, so we could make Nightwind into glue and use that to you know put the. Oh, nope. No. Nope. You stay I away have... from Nightwind. <laughs> this is not. This is a good not idea. A it is a good idea. This is not a glitter glue factory. You know, we just had a spirit that was, we could have made a spiritual glue out of the horse that was tormenting the bad guy. Hardy, you built this whole town. What kind of adhesive do you have to work to build these buildings up and to otherwise make things in the world? Wait, I think I got it. Uh, so have have you heard of, the, how do you say, um, glowy sap? Glowy sap. I have not. Glowy sap. But sap sounds like a good adhesive. Glowy sap, yes. It is It is like a magical sap that comes from some of the trees. Okay. It is actually. Don't you, sniff it, Ghost Blade. I wasn't what, thinking. That. Interestingly enough, give me, a, give me a history check, nobody. Sure. 12. Uh, on a 12, you vaguely remember seeing that on the glimmer gourd trees. There's sometimes uh, sap left behind on the tree. Oh, that means we've got to go back to the uh, the coblins. <laughs> if we get the glowy sap, that might be able to, you know, put it back together. But it, it would just be a, you know, bubble pipe. Probably won't have any magical properties anymore. Why wouldn't it have magical properties if we fix it up? The magic's gone. There's no more magic inside of it. <laughs> Hardy is not good at dissuading nobody. Hardy just has nobody is, is dead set, and Hardy cannot persuade him in one direction or the other. How do we get there's magic a chance. Back to the bubble pipe? You're asking guy who I don't I don't know. I, I, I wasn't the one who made it. Can, can oh, I found it. The, wait, you know why are we making this more complicated? Hardy, how long is the walk? You said we could walk to get there. How long is the <laughs> walk to get there? Well, it's Two going minutes? to probably take um a couple of days maybe okay we'll make camp along the way maybe stay in a couple of towns you know it would be a full, be a full transport there you mean you know, like an would, adventure like it would an be actual, kind of like an adventure yeah like a story arc like an adventure like this is a path that we should choose some may also use like the term story arcs they, they might they might also use the term campaign <laughs> oh, okay. Then I think that we should start walking. <laughs> well, I, I think that is for the best. Just make sure we don't forget Gimlet anywhere. Yeah, um, somebody should definitely put him in their bag. Lumberloss has spoken. The sword thief it seems to also be on board. Oh, yeah. I, I, wait, are you going to give that back? That this kind of big sword is the... Uh... You got Lima. <laughs> Lima's gonna like look down and like she's like completely forgotten that she even took the sword in the first place. So she's just gonna look at it and go, "Thanks for letting me borrow it," and just hand it back. All you had to do was ask. <laughs> you were prone. You had you. We didn't. It, it was. 
heat of battle. <laughs> Thank you, Glitter Play. I swear to God. I swear <laughs> to God. She just chose violence this morning. You can't win. She really did. She really did. Can I, you know, I haven't done it yet, but can I just throw Nightwind out and hit Lime with glitter? <laughs> she she <laughs> has it coming to her. <laughs> Uh, Lima, a, a magical <laughs> unicorn appears in front of you and you're covered in glitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was bound to happen at some point. It was. You were the only one that hadn't gotten it yet. Well, that is kind of... You're all sparkly glittery now. <laughs> Lumber loss notwithstanding, do you have any glowy sap around, Hardy? I... Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't... Uh, I don't, I don't have any here... And if I did, it's probably been overturned or something. Well, then, team, I would like to advocate for going out and talking with the Coblins about where we might get. The <laughs> sure, we can stop along the way. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. But uh, you know, remember how it goes. The they friend, they, they, they be careful. They try to eat us. <clears throat> Sounds good. Who's, who's taking the lead? Oh, I will lead. Definitely nobody <laughs> is taking the lead. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> sure about that. Okay, so uh, Lima, uh, wait, no, Lima's covered in glitter. Uh, Ghostblade, please. <laughs> yep, yeah, 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 coming up. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you clap. Yeah. Let's go. Sure. <laughs> Come on, bud. We got it. We can uh, do it. Okay. He starts like he starts purring in anticipation. <laughs> Like, wait, yep. wait, 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 real, <laughs> real quick, real quick, you see that room over there by the, by the, the closet? Yes. Go, go, go over to that closet before, before oh. we leave. What else did you steal and hide okay. away? We're going to walk over to the closet. What do we see? Yes. Uh, you, as you open the door to the closet, all you see is uh, a series of outfits hanging up. You say, okay, keep, wait, 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 no, not that one, not that one. Okay. <laughs> this one. Okay. Like, this is my ghost cat, blade cosplay. Yes. I, oh, I'm, I'm, yes. Yes. I He's sit with, put on with armor. Ghost Blade. <laughs> and he puts on the armor <laughs> as you guys are walking ahead. Twinning. 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 That's right. We're, we're, tw we're twinning. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that we look very similar and we look awesome. I, uh, well, I mean, I definitely look better, but let's carry on. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would like to leave Gimlet here in the building rather than take him to the Coblins. Probably safe. Can we stop? Is it is it like an adventure out and then back? We have to come back through Hardyville to go on our campaign or? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to come back this way. All right. So uh, in an effort to move us along, you guys will leave and you'll leave Gimlet safely behind. Just sitting there. Full mustache. And uh, as you move along, you'll you'll find yourselves going back down the path towards the towards where the goblins are. Uh, give me give me a perception check, all of you. Twenty. Twenty one. Thirteen. So it's like I'm perceiving some, but not a lot. As you guys approach, you notice that it is quite quiet up ahead. And you can kind of see where the Coblins, like where their hangout is. Uh, and you see that there are, yeah, all of their holes burrowed into the ground. Oh, God. There's someone else there that's threatening them. We're just, we're just going to, you know, nobody, you want to keep going? <laughs> I know that Hardy has a apprehension when it comes to these guys. Our friends are up ahead. We must keep going. You use that term our pretty loosely. I think you uh, made friends with them, but they seem to want to eat everything else. I won't let them eat you, Lumberloss. Don't worry about that. I seem to recall there were a lot of them. One, two, him. what was it? One, two, uh, asparagus. That's right. He, he knows how to count. Glitterblade, how much education have you had? <laughs> I, I I just remember Hardy telling us that. And asparagus seems like a larger number than two. 
They named me a Coblin. I love Metal Hardy. <laughs> they will remember me. Uh, and nobody, as you as you approach, you get to the camp and you kind of like look down into those the burrows, the holes. They're not there. But what you do see, as you both rolled really high, is that you could see that there is very, very clearly a trail moving off in a different direction. Do we see any glimmer gourds or glowy sap around? You see uh, off in the distance towards a different a different <laughs> way away, not down the path where the coblins walk. You see a different way that there are trees with glimmer gourds hanging from them. Kind of off in a direction that... Give me a history check. All of us or just nobody? No, just nobody. Okay. Natural one. <laughs> you, nobody, for a fact, as you look over, you think, how did I never see that? Like, I've never walked in that direction before. And there's like a whole bunch of glimmer gourd trees. Are these glimmer gourds edible to us? Says yes. Lima, the one that's always hungry. 100%. Okay. Lima's, Lima's going to just like pick one and like break it open and snack on it because that's going to help her anger. We're, we're Have not ever eaten an uncooked gourd. gourd. Lima has eaten pig people. So <laughs> do you know the consistency of an uncooked gourd? <laughs> oh my gosh. She's really, care. Is Lima eating that right now? Is she really just like going biting into the, Oh, <laughs> Okay, we need to put out the new Craigslist ads for adventurers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the survival instincts on this one really aren't that high. She was hungry. You know, she gets hanged. She, she, she turns to everyone else and it's like, do you want to see me hangry? <laughs> or would you rather see me fed? You could have, like, like, you have magic. You could have made fire to cook it at least a little bit. You know, sometimes when you're hangry, it okay, matter. fine. There's tree bark over there too. You want to snack on that? <laughs> Only if it's covered in chocolate. <laughs> Glitter blade. Don't make me use uh, uh, burning this is hands. as you. This is literally as you are covered from head to toe in glitter. <laughs> And she starts she, suddenly there's like there's like whispers that she's like sending around around glitter blade in the bushes. <laughs> so there's like threatening whispers coming at him. Got it. You guys are just having a debate and you use a cantrip on him. Mm -hmm. And while this is going on, I need to know what nobody's doing, because at this point you would have watched as the two of them kind of walk off to the trees. What are you doing? Well, as much as I want to meet my Coblin friends, I think we should go check out the Glimmer Gourds and see if there's sap there first. So I'll, I'll follow along, although I'm not thrilled that they're sniping at each other. Uh, yeah, as you as you walk along, um, and it's like a part of this area that you definitely haven't traversed before. Like, give me a uh, give me an investigation check. Sixteen. Ooh. On a 16, as you're walking around uh, and just like looking and picking glimmer gourds and you're looking for this 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 kind of glimmer, glowy sap, you see that there is a kind of a very large stone sitting there. Uh, it looks different from other stones because it has some kind of etching marked into it. It's, it seems like there's some kind of a, a glyph carved into this stone. What do you do? Lima, Lima, you're magical. Is this some kind of glyph carved into this stone? <laughs> <laughs> Should I do a history check? It's an arcana. Inside the piece of me is dying right now. <laughs> inside the inside the like a like a cr like a cringing of sorts kind of. Is, is, you know, I'm just so upset with Pip being stolen. You know. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, I think I'm, we have to give full credit to Rob saying, no, that's an Arcana check. <laughs> I would, yes. <laughs> uh, Lima, as, as nobody has pointed this out to you, you see the mm -hmm. same thing I just described. What do you do and how do you uh, perceive it? Uh, well, she's going to she's gonna come up and, and take a look. Uh, 
so but, but we don't know what language it's written in right give me an arcana check word. yes thank you doing the things <laughs> just saying <laughs> oh it's an eight on an eight the most you can tell from this no. lima is that this looks like a child doodles <laughs> so it was written by a cobbler Scribble, scribble, scribble. She's gonna turn to nobody and say, "I'm, I'm sorry, nobody. I, I don't, I don't recognize this. This isn't, this isn't anything I've ever seen before. It looks like little kitty doodles." Do you touch it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably gonna send me somewhere, but yeah. And as, as you touch it, <laughs> you will see this. Ooh. The whole group is skittish oh, about cool. being teleported randomly now. <laughs> to be fair, we It looks trained. like a koala face. <laughs> In what world are you seeing a koala face? <laughs> it's like the oval nose and then the eyes and little ears. It's a Rorschach test. <laughs> <laughs> it's a koala face with a fish on its head. Yes, it's wearing a fish hat. <laughs> Of course, of course, Lima sees a cute little creature out of scribbles. <laughs> and just Lima, saying, as you as you touch this, it begins to light up, and it just Ooh. this kind of magical aura kind of appears out of it. All of you can see this, and even Hardy goes, "What the heck is that?" Lima's going to instinctively look down at her amulet to see if it's doing anything. It is not doing anything. Okay, but what you are all going to see is that kind of a, a magical energy starts to protrude, come, come out of this thing, just kind of like this bluish aura kind of kind of lights up the area a little bit. And you see standing there, blue, uh, um, spirit-like, is a little boy with a red hat. <gasps> Pip! <gasps> Who looks like this. Aww. It's little Pip. Okay, so we've been out about a week now, and it's already been like super dangerous and stuff. Like, Father and Iliar went toe to toe with this wolf dog monster thingy, and then I realized we're like really far away from home. So I wanted to like, leave these markers behind just in case we didn't know how to find our way back home. So this is the first one. And that is where we are going to end today's episode of Echoes of Eternity. Oh no, we got some Pip audio logs to find. Oh no, it feels like the movie It. Oh no, that Pip is totally legit. Wait, It? How does it feel like It? That looks like George. I don't Rob know, I've never has. Seen, yeah. I've never. I've admittedly <laughs> never seen It. <laughs> Um, a poltergeist uses the dead brother to talk to the main That's character. Horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> no. <laughs> For the love of God, of God, why? <laughs> You know, this is about imagination. You can't blame me when my imagination takes me places. I, you know, he's got a thing with clowns, folks. <laughs> the guy who's surrounded himself with little dolls has a problem with clowns and dolls. But okay. <laughs> it's called owning your demons. It's owning. <laughs> that's what we do here, folks. Every Saturday morning, come and own your demons with us. <laughs> hey, we've got something for that. Yes. <laughs> yes. There it, is. there it is. I love it. <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. So that is that is going to tie together this episode. All right. That was great. Right All right. I love it. Perfectly on time. So we didn't find Pip, but we also did. And then <laughs> Rob made a reference <laughs> to Pip being a poltergeist clown monster from beyond. 
No, it could be the real George. <laughs> Sorry. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. not. This is just, I just, I it's just, just where my imagination went. And he didn't confirm that he's hip. He's, he's Pip, but he's I, Pip. Could say, I could say nothing else. He's Pip. Well, it's a completely different style of red hat. That's true. Yeah. So, I think Maybe he has a whole closet of red hats. We don't know. Just like Hardy's closet of armor and stuff? His cosplay outfits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pip. We'll find you, Pippity. buddy. Pippity Pip. All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, another Saturday. Week three coming next week. We'll be back with, I think, well, we are back next week, yes? We are back yeah. next week. And then for folks that are still with us, we will be taking the 24th off. We've got some other things to do. So there will be a hiatus between the episode on the 17th and then the one to follow. Okay. So next week, we're going to have another big episode. And you can get really mad at David and DM or chats. He loves that if his cliffhanger is just too harsh for a week off. <laughs> send send your hate over to him. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> for, every week that Pip, for every week that Pip is not back with the adventurers. <laughs> Who's that a Pip Doomsday clock? <laughs> it has it has been so how many days since Pip's disappearance? <laughs> and if we don't rescue him before the clock expires, then he's gone forever. Oh no. That is how it goes. <laughs> Sorry. David. Good times, everybody. So Thank you for joining us on Lawyers and Dragons. We love you all, and we have such a fun time with you on Saturdays. Thank you to Rob. Thank you to Alita. Thank you to David. Thank you to the picture of Pip. Everybody, thank you for being here. It's been wonderful. And I'm very happy to be back this season and having fun with y'all. Agreed. Same. Thanks, all. <laughs>